I'm Glenn McGuinness, and this is Outburst. On the program, we honour Canada's men and women in uniform. They've built a beautiful country that I think Canadians are incredibly proud of. We know what the sacrifices they've made and their families. Yes. And I think every single veteran needs to be needs to be saluted. Let's honor these people forever and never forget them and their sacrifice. Thank you. For many, November 11th is a day of reflection. And no matter where you may be in this country, the sacrifices made by our men and women in uniform have given us the freedoms we enjoy today. We set out across the country with our first question. What is the legacy of Canada's men and women in uniform? They've built a beautiful country that I think Canadians are incredibly proud of. We have people from all over the world who want to be here. So that's what they've built for us. That's what it means to me. I think it's twofold. Uh, first, uh, I'm being a Newfoundlander, a Labradorian. I look at Newfoundland's contribution uh, to the armed forces, uh, dating back prior to being a part of Canada. So I always remember that part of, of our history, uh, especially during World War I and, and World War II. Uh, but then also looking forward to uh, after joining Confederation and, and the commitment that was then made by our, uh, our uniformed soldiers uh, to, to Canada and, and the, uh, the various different factions of war. And, and peacekeeping efforts going forward from there. Well, I think they've given our, us our freedom and we should never take that for granted. And uh, we owe them a debt of gratitude for that. Oh gosh, I have great respect for anybody who's chosen to go over and fight for our freedom. Um, I guess that would be a legacy in itself. Um, I think it's important that we do celebrate it every day and, and remember and mark that day as an important one. So I guess the legacy would be of bravery, of respect for those who've chosen that path. For me, it was my parents that lived through World War II in Holland, right? And uh, they had, they developed connections with Canada through the soldiers there, right? And to me, that that's what Remembrance Day means is, is to me and why our armed forces should be honored for, for their time spent over there helping helping other countries uh survive the war right well uh just something special i mean what we fought in both world wars uh and helped win them obviously um i know personal ties i my grandfather fought in world war ii um he was in south africa um front line so you know there's a lot of history there and a lot of proud people the legacy is freedom with without what the men and women in uniform did, we wouldn't have the life that we have now. I think uh, they are greatly respected and celebrated by the country because we value their service and we know what the sacrifices they've made and their families yes. to support us and to protect us uh, from long in the past until today. That we still have a democracy that we still, in spite of what others might say, we, we have lots of freedoms and we're very fortunate. Well, that's a good question, especially that I hear participation is down now. Um, that we as Canadians may not be taking it seriously, our turn for service. Um, and, you know, looking at the um, what's happening in Ukraine right now, um, that we should take our safety, security and peace seriously. Um, I'm hoping more young people that aren't sure what they want to do will look at um, the military. Um, I hope we're spending at least near what we should be according to what NATO is asking us. And uh, concerning what the world is like right now, I think we're going to have to look at that more seriously and participate more seriously just to keep our peace and security in Canada. All in all, where would we be without them? So my hat's my toques off to them. The legacy of men and women in uniform is my tradition in my family. A lot of my family were in uniform. My friends' fathers were in uniform. They fought World War II. They fought Korea. And they, they sacrificed their being. They built my country for me. They gave me stability in my childhood. And they fought for my freedom. I'm proud to be Canadian because of them. 
they built a structure for my life and I'm proud and honored to be around when they were. They remember for their sacrifice, first of all, which was great. Uh, they re remember them for our freedom. We're a special country, as are a few others in that regard, and we wouldn't be where we are now without our armies to protect us and the people that join them to help fight for a good cause. That's hard to say anything better than that. I totally agree. Yeah, I mean, extraordinary loyalty and dedication and something that we, at this point in time, could learn a lot from. I think they're most remembered for uh, World War One and World War, World War Two, helping the Europeans uh, coming to their aid. And uh, I think you should be very proud to be Vimy Ridge, Juno Beach. Uh, those are the things that send the tingles up my spine. Here at the National War Memorial in Ottawa, thousands gather every November 11th, not only to remember those who have fallen in the line of battle, but also to remember those who have come home and those who continue the fight. For our next question, we ask Canadians what they'll be doing on November 11th. How will you mark Remembrance Day this year? Well, normally I go up and, and I go up with a friend of mine and I'm I like to go and watch the parade and probably record it on my camcorder or whatever. And I do this in memory of my uncle who served in World War II and he was in the Navy and he, actually he got a medal. He got the King George Medal. He got a medal from the Dutch government. He also got a medal from the Russians. He was involved with the capture of a German submarine. March um, 13, 1944, his sick ship was sunk three times. He was rescued in the Atlantic and he was involved in a D-Day bombardment. Normally, we buy a poppy and think about it at 11 o'clock. Um, just reflect a little bit on the past and what the armed forces have done for the world and people of Canada. And I always read that poem on Flanders Field because I think it's so beautiful. And we've been to, you know, the various sites and certainly can remember all that. And uh, so it's a vivid re recollection. By thinking about my father who was in the army. And uh, to me, uh, I know the sacrifices that, you know, army soldiers had to do during the second and the first world war. So uh, it's an important event. This year, uh, as we do generally, except for the pandemic, we honor it by going to the cenotaph my father-in-law was in the Second World War in the Air Force, and we lay a wreath, my daughter and my grandson, which would be his granddaughter and his great-grandson, lay a wreath for him every year at the Cenotaph. And we do it at the outdoor Cenotaph, not the indoor one. This year, I'll be in Calgary visiting my children and grandchildren, and I will observe Remembrance Day ceremonies in Calgary because I know they do celebrate there. They also have lovely remembrance ceremonies there and I will go. Usually I'm in Wedgeport at the church and this year will be a bit different, but I will remember the veterans. I luckily inherited a family Bible and uh, it within it there were some World War I and II remnants of parts of our family that had lost their lives in those um, events and I open that and take a look and just think about what what horrors they must have gone through and again thanks for where we are today. So. Remembrance Day is always an important day to stop and reflect. Um, I think generally what I, I typically do is I connect with friends and family we talk about what we're thankful for and uh, yeah I think that's what we'll be doing. Uh, I'll mark it the same as I do every year by attending the uh, National War Memorial here in downtown St. John's and uh, I'd like to take my, my son and my family with me and we come down and it doesn't matter the weather, we, we be a part of the ceremony every year. I've been doing that ever since I can remember. My mother would take me as a child uh, to uh, remember the, the sacrifices that my grandfather made during World War II. Um, normally on Remembrance Day, I actually, some years I've come down here to celebrate with the ceremony um, and just, I guess, kind of a morning of reflection with that, with the ceremony here. I find it quite moving, so. Um, I'm going to be in Ottawa with my family and we'll go to the ceremony on Parliament Hill there. Probably pretty well the same way as I have uh, in years gone by. 
That is, I recognize it. I wouldn't necessarily go to a cenotaph, but I would observe it. I'm aware of it. This year, I'm not sure because now with the restrictions lifted and stuff, I'm hoping to go out, maybe go to the memorial or something to see them and just be there to let them know that I'm grateful for what they've done. Um, well, I'm actually from Vernon, and with my parents, normally we go down to the uh, Remembrance Day ceremony at Caltire Place. Um, since I've been born, as long as my grandpa has been around, we've been doing that, so um, he's no longer with us, but that's something we'll continue to do even now that he's long gone. This year I will attend a local cenotaph service. Uh, we haven't been able to because of COVID, of course. They were kind of only invitation only the last couple of years, but this year hopefully it'll be open to the public and we will do our, our own moment of silence for people that have been lost and people that still serve. Okay. I'll be going to my hometown um, service uh, at Town Hall. Uh, we lay wreaths, we have the last post, uh, we have different ministers, different uh, religions, uh, saying prayers and a moment of silence. Because it's more important than ever. Yeah. Well, all those people that fought for freedom and the way the world is right now, Canada's freedom is more important than it has ever been. For our next segment, we sent our cameras out across the country to give Canadians the opportunity to express their thoughts and their gratitude to those who so bravely fought for our freedoms. Our question, what is your message to Canada's war veterans? Well, thank you for your service, obviously. And um, um, we, as a nation, should enjoy our freedoms. Uh, we think of you every Remembrance Day, and we should also be thinking about it year-round, the state of veterans in our country and how well we are treating them, or how well we should be treating them. I think my, my, my message to them would be... Uh, just being empathetic to what they've been through and uh, it, it just appears now more than than ever that I'm beginning to realize what they've been through, how much they're continuing to go through and I'm just hoping that the Canadian government and, and the provincial governments and um, continue or support them as much as we possibly can just knowing now what they've been through so. thank you honestly i mean i don't have the courage to do what people have done and and i just to restate my you know going back to the first question i don't have the courage to join the forces right so i do admire people who join the forces uh and yeah thank you is, is really ultimately all i have to say my, can, uh, my message for Canada's war veterans is uh, a, a message of thanks and, and remembrance. You know, the, the, uh, we haven't had a major strife, but Canada's always stepped up on the world stage, and I think that our veterans deserve to be remembered. And uh, uh, Memorial Day is a great day to do that. Well, my granddad served in, in World War II, so I'm thankful for, you know, the war vet, the veterans and soldiers who fought in World War II for my, our country and our leaders and myself. I'm, I'm a grandson of a war veteran, and I think um, it's a great honor to lay down your life for your country and your fellow men. That's a hard question. Uh, my father was actually World War II, and my grandfather for, you know, World War I, so, and I'm a military brat too. Um, to all of them, I wish, wish them a healthy life and I wish for peace for everyone. Uh, just thank you to everything that they've done. Yeah. Definitely, yeah, a big thank you for all their service and what they fought for and making uh, Canada a better place. Um, so I think my message to Canada's war veterans is just to continue thinking about unity and how we can bring not just Canadians together and the world. Thank you so much for fighting for us. Um, Hopefully you all get home safe and sound, um, and thank you. As a war veteran from the second Gulf War, I was in Iraq in 2003, um, that you're not alone. My message is thank you. Thank you. I don't necessarily agree with war, but I certainly appreciate what they've done for us, and I recognize and I appreciate their sacrifices. 
I think we, they, we want them to know that we understand what they went through and that what the uh, families have gone through and what we have because of them. I think that's the main message I would want to say. Well, I got to say, um, I give uh, all of my respect to all these people that fought for this cause. And uh, for any person that is doing a cause for his country, I think he's a hero. I don't know. God bless the view. Um, that I'd say that we're thinking of you and um, appreciate the like, personal sacrifices that you uh, had over the years. We are thankful for your service. Thank you. For Absolutely, all, thank you. All that uh, they did. Yes. For uh, our freedom. Totally I mean, fighting for our freedom, our rights. We are, we live in the best country in the world. Yes. We're so lucky. Yeah. And Especially in Kelowna. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. we thank you with all yes. our hearts. That we're thinking of you a lot. It's hard to it's hard to forget what you've done, especially when we can walk around and it's such a beautiful place and kind of do as we please. I know it's a there's a lot we didn't have to do to earn this. To the war veterans on Remembrance Day, uh, well, they they put in a lot for for our well-being here, so we should remember that always. Uh, my oldest brother. He's a, he's a vet actually, so uh, when it comes to, to family, well, we have in our, own, in our own family, we have veterans as well. So I, my hat's off to them, I tell you. Yeah. Canada's veterans from all conflicts have put themselves in harm's way on our behalf. Unfortunately, many have paid the ultimate sacrifice. And for many more, the mental and physical scars remain to this day. But do you feel they're getting the respect they deserve? And what approach should the federal government take? Our question. Does Canada do enough to honour its men and women in uniform? One thing I've already noticed about this community is all up and down Main Street, and maybe on a couple of the side streets, there are these magnificent banners, and they all feature various service uh, personnel from mostly the Second World War. I don't know if there's any First World War, but also the Korean War, and I think I even saw uh, a veteran from the Afghanistan conflict. And uh, I think that's really sweet. They're named, and uh, the conflict in which they participated is also named, and the family that's remembering them is named, sometimes very specifically or sometimes generically. I think that that's really sweet. I don't ever remember seeing that before. I've seen banners in various communities with poppies on them and, and, you know, do remember on Remembrance Day, lest we forget. However, here at Yarmouth, they've made it really personal. And uh, that touches my heart as a Canadian. Yeah, it's, there's, there's a, a lot of, uh, I think people could learn a lot about what goes on in our military and the, the people and then the families too. All these people should never be forgotten for sure. And they've got a place in my heart. And uh, the young people who are not first, were never, we weren't first hand witnesses like the Europeans, of course, but nevertheless, we were touched by, by the, the great wars and, and, and uh, smaller skirmishes and everything else. So let's honor these people forever and never forget them and their sacrifice. Thank you. No. No. I think they're not. No. I, I think we really need to up the ante and especially in terms of mental health, physical health once they come back, especially if they've been hurt abroad. And just a general respect for all of these people who are daily putting their lives out for us. Help them, finance them, give them good housing, give them good health care, and recognize them more than what we do. You know, we're a dying breed. I think we need to take care of them. We need to give them more attention, and we, we have to give them more time and um, celebrate more, uh, more uh, good things about them. You know, obviously there's uh, lots of uh, problems with uh, mental health. I mean, you go out overseas, you have to go through all this, uh, you know, potentially horrible things. And I feel like, you know, I'm not, I don't know too much about it, to be honest, but I feel like there is some, like a, some sort of like support system that's missing some sort of like social net that should, you know, help these soldiers to um, 
who are experiencing things like post-traumatic stress disorder to reintegrate into, uh, you know, average everyday civilian life? I would say just don't let them go hungry. Don't let them go unhoused. Um, I think a big issue now is that a lot of people who have served in past wars, they bear a lot of trauma. They bear a lot of difficulty. And it'd be nice if like one thing they didn't have to worry about was having a place to live or having enough food to eat. I think that's a really good question. I'm um, as a mental health counselor myself, I feel like um, addressing and serving the needs, any mental health needs of our veterans um, would go a long way to recognize in their service. And I think shoring up any sort of mental health services we have for our veterans, um, people currently serving or veterans, I think would be a really important next step. Well, I'm not really, I'm not really sure how to, I think we need to take care of them financially for sure. When they fought for our country, they come back. I'm not sure if, how much they struggle because I'm not well enough informed. However, I think that's definitely an area that we need to look at if they have stress from the wars or anything like that. They need uh, help in that area as well. And I would be very happy to see that happen. I think taking care of them in their, in their older ages, right? As they age, that dead generation ages, and making sure that they have a place to live and they've got medical care. We don't get to see them very often anymore and they don't really have an outreach that uh, would be helpful for people to understand. I mean, it would be nice that they could come into the schools or that the schools could go onto bases and see some of the things that they do. Um, it's a really good question right now. We have, uh, back in my hometown in New Brunswick, we put up um, uh, banners uh, about the people from the town who have been in the wars and been in the services. And every year for about two or three weeks, their family sees their family name and the individuals that were up. And it's really touching and it's really opening that, that conversation. I think we need to do some things more like that. Maybe the best way would be to um, not have any more wars. November 11th is not a national holiday. It is a statutory holiday in different parts of the country. Some people feel making November 11th a national holiday would take away from the true meaning of Remembrance Day, while others may feel that making November 11th a national holiday would give Canadians the opportunity to better reflect and remember. So we took this question to Canadians. Should Remembrance Day be observed as a national holiday? Yeah, I believe so. I think that uh, it serves an important purpose about reminding people the sacrifices that people have made in the past. I think, yeah, I think it should, yeah, it should give homage to all these people um, that uh, believed in the cause and um, fought for a purpose and today where we are here. I think, yeah, it should, yeah. Oh yes, for sure. I think it's important um, not only to mark people who have been involved um, in any kind of war times, um, to celebrate our ancestors who have taken part in that, but also just of an educational piece so that our youth are aware um, of people who've gone to fight for freedoms and especially in this day and age and things that are going on in our world, I think it's more important than ever to understand what has happened and what is happening. So I do feel it's important. Yes, I think so. Why? Um, because the sacrifices that were made, I think, often get forgotten in modern society. And I think it's important to remember um, what happened and what folks went through. I think it absolutely should be, again, for that same reason. If we forget why all those people, and right up until Afghanistan and, you know, current wars and current dictatorships all over the world, uh, it's, it's pretty scary right now. I'm scared. I'm scared for the, the future of democracy all over the world. So we should remember why people, and you know, I can remember the Second World War when, when my, uh, my grandparents lost, lost sons to the fight for democracy and freedom. I do, as long as people realize what they're actually taking the day off for. Absolutely, it should be. Uh, we can never forget the sacrifice that our fathers and grandfathers and great-grandfathers gave for our freedom. It should always be remembered, and the young people should be taught that. 
I believe it should be to uh, just show our respect for the service people back in history and today as well. My son is in the Navy on the West Coast of Canada, so I believe every, I, I always think of it as a holiday myself. First, I don't know why, I know it's not, but uh, I think it should be. I'm not sure that mandating it um, would make it any more significant than it already is, which I hope for every Canadian. Our, our ability to be thankful or to criticize depends on the country and the war veterans and the sacrifice they make. And I think it's sensible that every province has acknowledged that. And I think as the capital of the country should follow that as well, make it a, make it a national holiday to remember, to be thankful and to, to thank God and also our, our fathers and sons, as the, the national anthem says, yeah. I think this is a very interesting question because as generations get older, we start to wonder what is still relevant to us and how can we commemorate the same ideas as we were before when, you know, obviously when certain wars came along and things happened. Um, I, I think it's how can we apply the same you know, commemorative ideas to things that are happening around us and to people and Canadians who serve in different ways, um, whether it be through politics, um, general activism uh, for everyone, as well as our veterans. I think the veterans of our country have, uh, you know, they they put their lives on the line just to, uh, just to protect others. And I think that should be respected. And I think that should be, you know, celebrated and honored. I think for sure. I think Remembrance Day um, show, you know, honors the, the sacrifice that um, our men and women, our veterans and current, again, current service people are serving. I think it's an excellent way to honor their service, their current service and their past service. So I would be all for honoring them with a national holiday. Absolutely because those people fought hard for our country and we just, they, everybody should be respecting and honoring that. Yes, it should. And why? Why? Because lots of people put their lives on the line and we should take that day off and respect the fallen. I myself don't feel it should be because the thing is if it was a holiday, people would not really observe it. If uh, the kids were home, it would be just like another day. Um, parents the same. It's something which be, should be taught continuously and uh, everyone should even if let's say they're working they stop for that few minutes. Thanks for watching this episode of Outburst on CPAC. If you have any comments about this show or any other show you can find us on social media. You can also find us on our website at www.cpac.ca. I'm Glenn McGinnis and on behalf of my colleagues at the Cable Public Affairs Channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.